Let's try that one again. I think my mic was on mute three years into the pandemic and it's still happening. Uh, good evening, wonderful humans, and welcome to the Personal Branding Masterclass. My name is Scott and I'm really excited to be working with you this afternoon or this evening, depending on where in the country you're joining us from, as we look at how we can build our personal brand. Now, before we get started uh, this evening, I wanted to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands on which we're all gathering um, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. It's been fantastic to see young people and their educators joining us from all across Australia. And to start us off this afternoon, we would love to know what school or what city are you joining us from? Uh, for those of us, for, for those of you that are watching on YouTube Live, make sure to pop it in the uh, chat section um, and we'll be sharing it on the screen throughout the evening. We'd love to see where you're joining us from. I know just having a quick skim of the attendee list, I've been seeing uh, tickets, registrations coming through from Brisbane, uh, from up north in Cairns and Atherton, from over in Perth, down in Melbourne and everywhere in between. So it's so great to have you all joining us this afternoon as we look at building our personal brand. So my name's Scott. I'm going to be your facilitator for the masterclass this evening and um, a bit about me. So I'm 23 years old and I've been building my personal brand for the past nine years. Um, I'm the founder of the company Bop Industries that's delivering this masterclass uh, and it also is also helping power the next gen awards. Um, and Bop was a company I started back when I was 14 years old, um, initially as part of a school business program, selling hearings at local markets. For me, I took quite an entrepreneurial pathway with my personal brand. Um, and created a LinkedIn profile as soon as I turned 15 and started networking and building those networks as I grew my own business throughout high school and then out into the real world. Uh, for me, as a 23-year-old, I've had the pleasure of working with 80,000 students in 36 cities across the country and around the world. I'm one of the top 30 CEOs under 30 years of age for Australia and New Zealand, um, and I was also Queensland's Young Small Business Leader for 2021. So for me, I've had a pretty varied experience building my personal brand, and I'm really excited to be sharing my top tips and tricks with you all this afternoon. So let's dive in. Now, the masterclass this afternoon is all around helping you build your personal brand as you start networking, accessing opportunities, and getting a head start on your chosen career pathway. So what we're going to be looking at this afternoon is firstly, starting by identifying our passions, our superpowers, and our values. From there, we're going to combine those three elements to create a personal elevator pitch that you can use when you go to networking events, when you're creating professional social media profiles, and um, working with mentors. From there, we're going to be brainstorming ways to create your digital presence. So looking at, right, you've got an awesome personal brand. How do we get it out and into the world? And then finally, we're going to be exploring some ways that you can get started growing your network. As an aspiring young professional, young leader, young innovator, and young entrepreneur, it's important to have a really solid personal brand because that's how people are going to know you. And that could be anyone from mentors, peers, potential colleagues, potential clients, uh, you name it, they all will know your personal brand. So it's important we spend a bit of time figuring out what we want to be known for. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in the masterclass this afternoon. Now, this masterclass is the first of a many running as part of the Next Gen Awards. Now, the Next Gen Awards are a national awards program designed to showcase the next generation of top young talent across Australia. Entries for the Next Gen Awards are open to all Australian primary and high school students and their teachers with six categories on offer. So for our 2023 Next Gen Awards, we're going to be crowning the Young Innovator of the Year, the Young Entrepreneur of the Year, the Young Leader of the Year, the Gen Z of the Year, the Gen Alpha of the Year, and the Innovative Educator of the Year. Nominations are currently open and they're going to be closing on the 21st of August, 2023. So that's around halfway through term three. I'd highly recommend getting your nominations in if you haven't already. We've seen some amazing nominations coming through and it's been great to see so many coming from all across the country. 
Now, I also wanted to start by thanking our sponsors. This uh, webinar and the whole Next Gen Awards wouldn't be possible without these organizations. Now, we have Federation University, and they're sponsoring our Young Innovator of the Year Award. We have Bond University's Transformer Program, sponsoring our Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award. We have the Fogarty Foundation, who have just come on board as a state sponsor for Western Australia and working to increase access for these awards and other opportunities for young West Australians. And also Bop Industries, a Brisbane-based education company helping power these awards. So a massive thank you to Federation University, Bond University Transformer, the Fogarty Foundation and Bop Industries for helping make the Next Gen Awards and this masterclass happen. And you can support us by supporting them. So I know we've just dropped a link in the chat um, and in the comments section with links to all these amazing organizations. We highly recommend checking them out and seeing how they can help you as an aspiring young professional, young leader, young entrepreneur and young innovator. So let's dive in. We're going to start by having a look at why build a personal brand to start with. Now, some of you may have a personal brand and some of you may spend a lot of time working on your personal brand. But for some of you, you might not know what a personal brand is. So let's have a look at what exactly they are and how they can help us. So a personal brand in a nutshell is what you're known for or what you're good at. We all have a personal brand. And another way to think about a personal brand is sort of like a reputation. It's what, how you would describe a friend or a family member to someone that had never met them before. Now, it's normally combined of a combination of your skills that set you apart. It brings together your passions and your experience. And it's really what people would say about you when you're not in the room. But in the context of this afternoon's masterclass, we're going to be looking at a personal brand from a professional standpoint. So obviously, as a friend, as a family member, we all have a reputation. Uh, but what we want to do is think about it in a professional context. So if we are applying for job opportunities, if we're launching our own business, if we're getting initiatives and projects up and off the ground, how do we want to be known? And how do we want to know, be known by the people that we work with, that we work for and that work for us? So that's what we're going to be looking at when we talk about personal brands this afternoon. Now, why does it matter? Well, it's expected that young people today are going to be changing careers about every seven years. So for us as young people, we're going to be continually changing jobs, changing career pathways, reskilling and upskilling. And I know for myself, um, as a young person in business, the thing I've learned is that the world is very small and very interconnected. Everybody knows everybody. So it's really important that you're putting your best foot forward and you're really being quite intentional about the interactions you're having with people and how you want to be known. It's also important to think about a personal brand when it comes to employment prospects. A really interesting statistic is that currently around 80% of jobs are not actually posted on job boards or company websites. One of the main places that recruiters look is LinkedIn, um, and also to it's through word of mouth. It's through recommendations, referrals, um, and having friends of friends. So it's really important that we've got a great personal brand so people can find us on platforms like LinkedIn, but also to people that we've worked with in the past are willing to put our name forward for future projects projects. And finally, social media matters. And I know as young people, we hear this all the time, but our digital footprint really does make a difference. And that's obviously in our personal lives, but also too in our professional lives. I know for myself as an employer, I will quite often uh, do a little bit of a stalk and see if I can find people applying for jobs um, at Bob on platforms like Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn, just to see what their social media profile looks like. And I think for employers, one thing they find really interesting is when they find a great LinkedIn profile or a really interesting YouTube channel or a really engaging TikTok channel as well. So it's really important to think about what sort of message we're putting out to the world in our professional lives, if we're looking to get jobs, access opportunities, um, and be able to grow our personal brands. So let's have a start by looking at some personal brand examples. Let's see what it actually looks like and what it looks like in practice. So the first person with a really great personal brand is LeBron James. Now, LeBron James is a really famous basketballer. And for some of you, you may know him just like, oh, yeah, he's a basketballer. But why is he one of the most well-known basketball players in the world? And it's because he's created a personal brand to say, look, I'm more than just a basketball player. I'm not just another guy running around on a court. I am a positive, positive role model and inspiration for young people. I have created all sorts of different initiatives. So he's created the I Promise School and does a lot of media, trying to empower young people. And he gets really active on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as well as being an excellent basketballer, he's known to be quite inspirational. He's got a lot of humility. He's not very selfish. He always puts others first. He's really courageous. He's incredibly understanding, hardworking, and a really great leader. 
So while someone like LeBron James has become famous because of his raw talent at being a great basketballer, he's been able to build a really holistic personal brand around himself as more than just a basketball player. Um, And he's got a number of different things going on. Another example is Sarah's Day. Now, Sarah's Day um, is a health influencer and quite a successful health influencer. That I'd highly recommend uh, checking it out. Um, But Sarah's Day, again, has built her brand. So she's not just a health influencer. On YouTube, she's known as a holistic health princess, something that's incredibly memorable for her subscribers. But she owns multiple businesses. She's been able to leverage her personal brand as an entrepreneur to open a number of different businesses. And she's now got 1.5 million YouTube subscribers. She shares her life really authentically um, and she's very much not one of those super polished influencers. She wants to let people in behind the scenes to understand what it's like in her day to day. And again, she's built this personal brand of being someone that's really bubbly, really friendly, really active, authentic and really high energy. And having such a strong personal brand that people know her for has helped her access all sorts of different opportunities for her business as an influencer and also to just as an individual. So these are some really great examples of two people that we know um, for one thing, but have been able to build a really strong personal brand to stand out from the crowd and access additional opportunities around that. So let's dive in and let's get started with our first activity to build our personal brands. And what we're going to do is we're going to start this afternoon by building our personal brand and then have a look at how we can leverage the personal brand that we've built to access all sorts of other opportunities as well. Now, a personal brand and what we're going to look at when it comes to this afternoon is made up of a number of different things. But for this afternoon, we're going to look at three key things. So understanding what are your passions, what are your superpowers and what are your values? So your passions, what are those topics you can talk about forever? Your superpowers, what are those strengths that you have and what do you normally bring to a team? And your values, what's important to you? And it's really important to understand what these three key things are, because for all of us, they're quite different. But we need to really keep these three things in mind, our passions, our superpowers and our values, when it comes to accessing opportunities, collaborating in teams and finding people we want to work with um, as we progress through our careers. And what we're going to do is after we have a go identifying our passions, our superpowers and our values, we're going to look at how we combine those three things to create a personal elevator pitch that we can use when we start going to networking events when we're finding mentors, creating um, our online presence and accessing different opportunities. So to start with, I want you to think about what are your passions? Now, your passions are what motivate you and what you really love doing. They're the things that you really lose track of time uh, when you start doing them or you just can't stop. You just want to do them all day, every day. And when it comes to thinking about your passions, I find these three questions help me and help me a lot. Firstly, what are the topics that you love to talk about that you could talk about all day, every day? I know for myself, I am really interested in technology. I am so fascinated in chat GPT and artificial intelligence and virtual reality and mixed reality. I could talk about those topics all day, every day. Then I want you to think about what subjects in school do you enjoy the most? Like when it comes to the end of the day and you've got to do your homework or you've got to start on your assignments, what topics do you, what subjects do you start with? I know for myself, I loved drama and music. All those art subjects were always the first subjects that I went to at the end of the day when it came time to doing my assignments. And finally, thinking about what do you like to do in your spare time? On your weekends, after school, whenever you have some spare time, what do you typically do? I know for myself, I love catching up with friends and socialising, and I also really enjoy cooking as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you about two or three minutes and I want you to have a go either on a piece of pen and paper, on a notes page, on a document, wherever you do your best work, taking your best notes. I want you to see if you can come up with at least three points for each of these. So three topics that you love to talk about, three subjects that you enjoy in school and three things you like to do in your spare time. And for those of you watching on YouTube Live, I would highly recommend uh, popping those passions in the comment section. And we're going to be sharing those on the screen as you guys are working and making some of those notes. So what we're going to do is just to recap, I'm giving you three minutes and I want you to have a go identifying three points for each of those questions on the screen. I'm going to put this slide up in full screen. I'm going to put some music on for you guys and we're going to give you three minutes to get that done. Your time starts now.
All righty, team. I might bring you back now. So we've had a go identifying our passions, and I've seen a couple of the comments in the comment section already. People passionate about basketball, um, and also too, Michael. Great to see that you're passionate about teaching your diploma class as well. Always love to see a passionate educator out there. So it's important to understand what your passions are and what you love doing, because at the end of the day, you've got to work on something you're really passionate about, particularly when you're a high achieving young person or just anyone trying to push themselves outside of their comfort zones and achieve some really great things. You're going to be spending a lot of time working on whatever that is, whatever that project is. And it could be doing long hours in a job that you really love, or it could be doing long hours, getting an innovation brought to life or a business up and off the ground. So it's important that at the end of the day, whatever it is you're working on, you're really passionate about it. It's something that you could talk all day about, something that you really enjoy working on and something that you like to do uh, in that spare time. So next up, what we're going to do is have a look at what our superpowers are. So passions are one thing. They're the things that we really enjoy. Our superpowers are sort of like our skills. They're the things that we're pretty good at. Now, normally these superpowers take less effort than other tasks. They just come quite naturally to us. Um, and it can be a little bit difficult to identify our superpowers. So what I'd highly recommend doing is having a think about these three questions. Firstly, what are you good at? Like, what are those skills that you have? If you were going, like, joining a team or a group project, what are the sort of tasks that you might take over and take lead on? Or when it comes to the sort of subjects you study, what are those sort of subjects? Because chances are you probably are pretty good at them. The next one I want you to think about is what do your friends, your family, or your teachers compliment you on? Is it that you have really nice handwriting? Is it that you're a fantastic public speaker? Um, or is it that you're really creative and always come up with out-of-the-box ideas? And then finally, I want you to think about if you were to receive an award or, I mean, if you have received an award, what would that award be for? So these are just a couple of questions uh, to prompt your thinking and get you thinking about what your superpowers might be. But what I want you to do is, as we've just done with our passions, I want you to think about three potential points for each of these questions. Three things you're good at, three things that your friends, your family, your teachers compliment you on. And if you don't re receive an award or if you have received an award, what are the three things that you might potentially receive an award for? So having a go identifying our superpowers. Now, as a little tip as well, if you're sitting there and struggling with this, chances are your passions and your superpowers might be quite complementary. Like if you're really passionate about gaming and you're like an avid gamer, chances are you're probably pretty good and your superpower might be things like strategy or teamwork or communication. So again, I'm going to give you about three minutes. Have a go seeing if you can identify what are your superpowers. I'm going to put some music back on and then we'll start bringing it together after that. Alrighty, team. 
And we'll hold that one there. So how did you go with your superpowers? Now, I know I personally struggle with this a little bit. Um, and sometimes in Australia, we can really struggle identifying and calling out what our superpowers are. There's quite often this thing that you might have heard about before called tall poppy syndrome, where in Australia, it sometimes can feel like you don't want to be, you don't want to put yourself out there. You don't want to say, yes, I'm awesome at this because other people might cut you down. And sometimes we call that imposter syndrome as well, where it's saying, oh, am I actually good enough to do this thing? So it is really important, though, to think about what your superpowers are. And I always recommend chatting to your friends, your family, your teachers, your mentors, the people that you work with and that know you really well, because they can probably identify some superpowers and some skills that you might not even even have identified in yourself. And then the challenge is thinking about how you can commercialize those superpowers, how you can get them out there and how you can start accessing opportunities that will let you develop those superpowers even further. I know for myself, I'm always thinking about what those superpowers are and I love to use LinkedIn um, and you can on LinkedIn uh, endorse people for their different skills or their superpowers. So other people will actively tell you what your superpowers are based on the projects they've worked with you on. So we've had a look at our passions. We've had a look at our superpowers. What we're going to do now is move on to our final part of building our personal brand, our personal elevator pitch, which is thinking about our values. Now, values are a really important thing. And particularly as a young person, we don't spend a lot of time thinking about our values. We're just like, yep, there's an opportunity. I'm going to take it. But it's really important to think about opportunities that align with your personal values. And that could be potential careers that align with your values and job opportunities that align with your values. It could be accepting internships, work experience opportunities, or even starting businesses or getting uh, working with teams to bring innovations to life. You've got to think about the values of the projects that you're working on and collaborating on and make sure that they align with you. So what we've got on the screen is a whole bunch of values for you to consider. Um, and what we want you to do is select the 15 values from the screen that matter to you the most. Now, if there's a value that is really important to you that isn't on the screen, you can write that down as well. But these are just a few to get you thinking. And out of all of these values on the screen, if you had to pick just 15 of them, which 15 would it be? Do you value fun over hard work? Do you value balance over freedom? Start to think about some of those questions. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be going to give you um, about three minutes to write down those 15 values. So you've got to be quick. I'd recommend scribbling them down on a post-it note, on a piece of paper, uh, in a, on a document uh, in front of you or a notes page. And what we're going to do is start to see how we can bring those together, your values with your superpowers and your passions to create that personal elevator pitch. So I'll put some music on. I'm going to give you three minutes um, and I want you to select the 15 values out of these that, that, that matter the most to you. Your time starts now.
Awesome. Fantastic to see some of you guys popping your values in the comment section. That's great to see. Um, and really interesting to see how we all value different things. Some of us value adventure over family. Some of us value leadership over diversity. Some of us value creativity over generosity. And that's okay. Everyone has different values. But it's important when accessing opportunities to think about the sort of values of the company that you might be working for, the team you might be working with, um, or the opportunity that you're accessing. Now what we've done is we've got 15 values in front of us in theory. Um, hopefully by now you've picked 15. My challenge to you next is to narrow that 15 down to seven. So you've got your top 15. If you had to cut that in half and go down to seven, so just above half, what are your top seven values? What are the seven values that are the most important to you? So what I want you to do is if you have a piece of paper, you might want to cross out the ones that don't make your top seven. If you're on a document, you might want to bold the ones that are in your top seven. But I want you to think about out of those top 15, what are the top seven that are most invalid, the most valuable to you? If push came to shove, which seven would you go for the most and protect the most as well? Again, I'm going to give you about, I'm only going to give you one minute for this activity. So you don't have long, just have a quick look, see if you can cross a couple of out and then tell us what your top seven are. And again, feel free to pop it in the comments section. Um, I'm really interested to see what everyone on this uh, virtual masterclass values. Your time starts now. Alrighty, so I can see a couple coming through already. That's your minute up. And hopefully by now you've picked your top seven values. Now, the final time I ask you to do this, um, and I promise it is the last time, um, I want you to narrow from that top seven down to your top three. So if everything's been taken off the table, you've got an opportunity that you absolutely love, but it can only satisfy three of your values, what would those top three values be for you? And I really want you to think about that, thinking about the life you want to create, the sort of people you want to work with, and the sort of projects and careers you might want to work on or in. I want you to think about what are those three values that are most important to you when it comes to going out into the world and accessing opportunities. I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this. So I'm just going to put a little bit of music on. You've got 30 seconds. What would be your top three values?
All righty. So that was your 30 seconds up and I can see a couple, again, a couple of people popping what they come up with in the chat and the comment section, which is great to see. So it's really important to think about what matters to you um, and what those top values are, because every time you access an opportunity, you've got to sort of do a bit of a trade-off of values. Not every single opportunity is going to satisfy all of your values, but you've got to think about what are those uh, values the closest to your heart and find opportunities that align with that. So what we've done is we've had a look at our passions, our superpowers, and our values. Now it's time to look at how we can bring them together into an elevator pitch. Now, an elevator pitch is essentially a short, sharp way to pitch an idea to someone that's never heard about it before. And we use the concept of elevator pitches all of the time in the business space and in the startup space. Elevator pitches actually came about um, in the startup space because of the idea that if you were in Silicon Valley or some big tech hub, you might get into the elevator of a building and be going up or down a couple of floors and you might walk into the elevator with some big rich investor some big venture capitalist and you've got a business idea and you've got to pitch them on this business idea and get them to invest from the moment it takes the elevator uh from the time it takes the elevator to go from the bottom floor to the top floor of that building so it's got to be short it's got to be sharp it's got to be punchy and elevator pitches are something that we do all the time you've probably pitched before and i actually know we have a pitching masterclass coming up next term for anyone that wants to join chances are you've had to pitch new shows that you're watching on Netflix to your friends at morning tea or lunch and you've had to pitch yourself when you're going for job interviews and that's what our elevator pitches are going to be looking at this afternoon is, is if you're going to a networking event if you're going to a job interview if you're going to a pitch night how would you describe yourself in one sentence to someone that's never met you before when someone walks up to you at a networking event and says hi my name's Scott who are you what do you answer with and what we've got is a little bit of a structure for you and a bit of a formula to follow so you might be saying uh, that you are really passionate about using your superpowers to achieve your values through your passion. So for example, you might say that I'm really passionate about using my public speaking skills to help others through technology, or I'm really passionate about using my art skills to build compassion towards animals, or I would love to support my friends to have good health through cooking. And even as a young person, before you've got a full-time job, before you have a fully-fledged business or a fully-fledged idea, this is a really easy and concise way to tell people what you're all about. Tell people what you're passionate about, tell people what you're good at and what your values are and start accessing opportunities this way. So especially as a young person, when going to a networking event for a first time, pitch night or chatting to mentors and they ask you who you are and what you're all about, this is a really effective way to do that. Now, what I find really interesting is you might be looking at some of these elevator pitches being like, well, how would someone support their friends to have good health through cooking? But there are always so many roundabout ways uh, you can combine your superpowers, your values and your passions and turn that into a full time career. It's not always about wanting to grow up to be necessarily a doctor or a teacher or an accountant. Um, you can do things in some pretty crazy ways. And I've got some cool examples I wanted to share with you this afternoon. Now, a great example of someone that combined their passions, their superpowers, and their values is Francis. Now, Francis is a TikTok influencer, and some of you guys that have TikTok might have seen his TikToks around, um, but he is an avid train spotter. Now, Francis is absolutely passionate about trains. And essentially what he did is during some of the lockdowns that we had in 2021 and 2022, he would strap a GoPro to his head. We had two GoPros. He had one that was facing him, as you can see uh, up in that top right-hand corner there. And he had one that was facing a train. And he would essentially go and stand on bridges on the side of the road, anywhere that he could get a good look at a train. And he would just record himself getting so excited about these trains as they drove past. Now, he, what he did was he edited those videos, uploaded them to TikTok, and it turns out he found a bit of a niche and it went pretty well for him. Now, his TikTok account quickly gained traction um, as he combined his passion for trains, his values for um, sharing his love of trains, and his superpowers in communication and social media. And he quickly amassed about 2.6 million TikTok followers and 1.8 million Instagram followers. And has been able to turn this into a full-time career, getting paid to do collaborations with brands like Gucci and The North Face. So a really cool example of someone that was able to combine their passions, their values, and their superpowers uh, to turn that into a full-time career.
Another example is having a look at Simone Gertz. Now, Simone Gertz is a YouTuber and she prides herself as one of the best inventors of useless things. Now, Simone was a bit of an inventor, a bit of a tinkerer. She was really into STEM and robotics. And she started a YouTube channel uh, and she would just create different random robots and robots that were designed to fail. Essentially, what she would do is she would create a, a hairdressing robot that was essentially a drone with a pair of scissors strapped to it, and she'd try and cut people's hair with a drone. She had an alarm clock that would wake her up in the morning by slapping her in the face, all sorts of different crazy things like that. But it worked out pretty well for her. She was able to grow a YouTube channel with 2.6 million subscribers and over 160 million views, and she now frequently gets approached by and paid by brands to create useless robots for their business. So again, someone that was able to turn a love um, for robots, uh, skills in STEM and robotics and um, skills in communication into a full-time career pathway. A really great example of that. And the final one that I wanted to share is having a look at Instagram and having a look at Doug the Pug. Now, if you don't already follow Doug the Pug on Instagram, I would highly recommend it because it is some of the most heartwarming content on the app as far as I'm concerned. And Doug the Pug was one of the first Instagram animal influencers. Essentially, Doug's owner Leslie created an Instagram account for him back in 2013, initially just with friends and family, like 30 followers, posting photos of him around the house, out on walks and taking naps because he snores like a freight train. But really quickly, as she kept posting, that follow account kept growing to the point where Doug the Pug now has over 3.7 million followers on Instagram and a combined 12 million followers on his various social media pipes. He now travels the world, uh, collaborating with different brands and influencers, getting photos with people like Ed Sheeran, Billie Eilish and the Obamas, um, and getting paid to do collaborations with brands like Voss Water, Stranger Things and Riverdale. So again, someone that used their love of animals and their skills in social media content creation to turn their love of their dog into a full-time career pathway. A pretty cool job if you ask me. So what I encourage you guys to do is to start thinking about what your elevator pitch might look like. And I want you to think about that after the masterclass today. This is going to be a little bit of homework for you guys, is thinking about creating your own personal elevator pitch. So I encourage you to think about how you could use your superpowers to achieve your values through your passions. So thinking about creating a really short, sharp, succinct statement, one sentence that really describes you in a nutshell, what you're passionate about, what you're good at, and what you value. And start using those when you go to different networking events and different pitch events as well. And I always recommend creating a couple of different personal elevator pitches depending on where you're going. I know for myself, when I go to different events, I pitch myself in different ways depending on who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to young people, I will pitch myself in one way. If I'm talking to teachers, I'll pitch myself in another way. If I'm talking to corporates, I'll pitch myself in an entirely different way. So it's really important to think about your audience and always tailor that elevator pitch to your audience. So as a bit of homework for you guys uh, for this afternoon or for the rest of the week, thinking about how you can create your own personal elevator pitch. So what we're going to do now is move on. You've got your elevator pitch. You've got your personal brand. You've identified all of those elements. How do we actually get it out into the world? Well, we can do that by creating a really strong digital presence. Now, it is no secret that these days, if a business is not on, uh, on social media, if it's not on the internet, it may as well not exist. It's the same thing with people. It's really important that we have quite a strong digital presence because that's how we can start to access opportunities, how we can start networking, and how people will be able to find us. And there's a number of different ways you can create a great digital presence. Now, your digital presence can look like a range of different things, and there are many different ways to do it, and it really depends on you, your personal preferences, your parents and guardians, what sort of platforms they'll allow you to have, but also to the pathway that you want to follow and what's most relevant for you. And a couple of things we're going to look at this afternoon is how you can create a great LinkedIn profile as a young person, how you can create a personal website as a young person, and how you can create a professional social media account as a young person. So let's dive in and have a look now. So the first one is creating a LinkedIn profile. Now, LinkedIn, for those that don't know, is essentially like Facebook or Instagram, but for work. On LinkedIn, you create a profile. You have a profile picture, you have a bio, you have a bit about you, and you can do posts. And it looks really similar to Instagram, Facebook, but it's, again, for professionals and for work. Now, it's a really great place to build your network. I will preface that I believe the minimum age for LinkedIn is about 14 years old. So if you are younger than 14, I'd recommend checking with your parents or guardians before creating a LinkedIn profile. But you can see here a couple of photos of what LinkedIn looks like. So on the left-hand side, we've got just a screenshot of that LinkedIn feed with your 
feed in the middle, your profile on the left, and just some current affairs on the right. And then a screenshot of my LinkedIn profile, actually, uh, on the right-hand side as well, where you can see I've got a headshot, I've got a cover image, and I've just got a little bit about me. So when it comes to LinkedIn uh, as a young person, it can be really daunting getting on that platform. It's a platform full of busy professionals, very successful professionals, all posting their updates. And it can be a little bit daunting saying, well, look, I'm a young person. I'm a high school student. What do I even post about? Like, I'm really not that interesting. But I encourage you to just start watching first and foremost. So for me, I created my LinkedIn profile back when I was about 14 years old, 15 years old. And I initially spent my first six months just liking different posts, commenting on posts, and just seeing what people were posting and resharing other people's posts. Because I very much felt like that. I was like, I'm just a young person. I'm really not that interesting. But then I started seeing what people were posting about saying, oh, I could probably write a blog post like that, or I could write a post like that and share some of my updates and some of my experiences. And you'll gain that confidence uh, slowly as you gain that experience. But a few top tips on where to start. Firstly, make sure you have a profile picture and a background image on your LinkedIn profile. Second, put as much detail into your profile as possible. So um, include what you did in your past like leadership positions, in extracurricular programs you did, in educational opportunities you've had, and any successes and any wins. Like if you were a house captain at your school and your house won like every trophy that year in like sports carnival, swimming carnival and everything in between, um, make sure to talk about that. Say, yeah, like actually the, we did some pretty cool things. I also recommend don't be afraid to connect with people on LinkedIn. One of my favorite things about LinkedIn is the search tool. So essentially on LinkedIn, you can go and you can search for people based on their job title, based on the industry they work in, based on the company they work for, um, and all sorts of different things like that. And if you find someone that you might want to connect with, that could be a great mentor, that could be a client, a collaborator, don't be afraid to reach out, but always create include just a brief introduction about yourself and why you want to connect. So that little elevator pitch, that personal elevator, elevator pitch we talked about before is great for that. Also too, make sure to endorse people and ask for endorsements yourself. So endorsing people's skills, saying, yes, I've worked with Scott. He's really good at communication, things like that. And just re make sure you're sharing relevant content. Now, as mentioned, LinkedIn is a platform for work. You don't want to be posting your holiday pics on LinkedIn. You don't want to be posting what you're cooking for dinner on LinkedIn, unless maybe you are a chef, in which case you go for it. Um, but make sure to keep it relevant to the industry that you want to work in, the sort of opportunities you want to uh, access, and the sort of people you want to work with. So that's LinkedIn in a nutshell. Another option is creating a personal website. Now, a personal website is a great tool to use as an online resume or a portfolio of work to sort of showcase your skills, showcase your experience, and to showcase what you can actually do. And I definitely find this really interesting. I'm seeing more and more people linking their personal websites when applying for all sorts of different things, whether it's awards programs, whether it's special opportunities, or even jobs. They'll quite often link to their personal website to say, look, I can tell you on my resume that I have all of these skills, but head to my personal website and I'll show you that I have these skills. Now, a personal website is essentially anything you want it to be, but I always recommend use your personal website to practice what you preach. Sort of saying, look, if you've got a one-page resume that says you are great at photography, make sure to have some actual photography shots on your personal website. If you have a, have a resume that says you are really entrepreneurial, make sure to include like some blog posts talking about your past businesses on your personal website. So a personal website is a really great way to bring all that information together and actually showcase the skills that you've got. Because one of the things we're seeing is employers are getting more and more wary. They're saying, well, look, just because you say you're good at communication doesn't mean I necessarily will believe it. I want to see it in action before I hire you. So a personal website is really important for that. Now, a few things when it comes to creating your personal website, uh, a few things to consider. Firstly, the platform. Now, if you don't know how to code, that is okay. I personally could not code a website to save my life. But believe it or not, I actually do a lot of the website updates for all the BOP websites, the next-gen websites, everything like that, because I found creative ways to do it. Now, when it comes to creating personal websites, a few of my favorite platforms to use are Wix, WordPress, and Weebly. They all have strengths and weaknesses, and it's just important to find one that works best for you. But they're all no-code, which I find really handy, which means you don't have to write a lick of code to create them. You can just drag and drop things around like it's a Canva document. So with your personal website, make sure it's functional. It's easy to use, easy to find information. Um, showcase as many photos or graphics or visuals as possible, as opposed to writing out paragraphs and paragraphs, and always have a way for people to contact you. It could be an email, it could be a phone number, it could be a contact form, because people might be on your personal website loving what you're all about, but then saying, well, how do I get in touch? So it's important to consider that when creating a personal website. 
Next one is having a look at a professional social media platform. Now, professional social media platforms are quite new. People are only just starting to do them, but they're really powerful, especially if you want to create a really strong personal brand. Now, I know for myself, I have professional social media accounts. I have a social media account for me, Scott, as just a 23-year-old normal person. But then I have a professional social media account for me, Scott, the young entrepreneur, uh, and the keynote speaker and everything like that. And I find it a really nice way to differentiate. I will quite often meet people at networking events and on all sorts of different opportunities. And they'll say, oh, can I send you a Facebook friend request? Can I follow you on Instagram? And before I had a professional social media account, I was like, oh, maybe don't. Um, But now I'm like, absolutely. I have a whole social media account dedicated to that, where I have content that's tailored for that professional audience. Um, So it's important to think about what social media platform is best for you. And also too, if you really need a professional social media account, they are a bit of work to keep up. Um, So I always think about first and foremost, like, do you actually need one? So you might want to think about starting a YouTube channel. Um, YouTube is great if you have a particular skill that's quite visual. So if you're a great communicator and you want to upload videos of you doing pitches or um, public speaking engagements, that's a great way to start a YouTube channel. If you are a great artist and you want to show videos of you doing art, that's another great way to start a YouTube channel. But when it comes to starting a YouTube channel, you firstly got to understand your niche. So what makes you different from everyone else on YouTube and how can you stand out from the crowd? I recommend doing some research, see if you can find some similar channels for for a bit of inspiration. YouTube has been around for a while now, and there are a lot of great influencers doing a lot of great work that you can learn from. You should be consistent with your posting. So say, well, look, I'm going to post at least once a fortnight or at least once a month and just try and keep on that. That consistency is key and the YouTube algorithm will reward you for that. And make sure that you connect your channels uh, to your niche as well. So if you are do you have a YouTube channel, make sure to also link your Instagram, your LinkedIn, whatever platforms you have, so people can go and follow more of you um, once they've found your YouTube channel. Another platform you might consider is an Instagram profile um, and a professional Instagram profile. Now, I know for myself, the two social media platforms I've picked for my professional social media um, personas are Instagram and LinkedIn. I do LinkedIn because it's really valuable. Instagram because I just love Instagram, like Insta stories, Insta reels, Insta, Insta feed. It's got me hooked. Now, when it comes to creating a professional Instagram account, the first thing I recommend is making it a business profile. So essentially, when you set up your Instagram account, go into the profile uh, settings and you can just tap a button that turns it into a business profile. That gives you all sorts of really handy analytics um, and just helps you uh, really understand who your followers are and how you can create content designed for them. I also recommend being really authentic and real with your Instagram posts. One of the things we're noticing is people are moving away from really polished, really well done, high production posts on platforms like Instagram. They're looking for more just like behind the scenes shots. And that's why Insta stories is popping off so much at the moment. I also recommend keeping a main theme with your photos and with your feed um, and with your posts as well. So I know for myself, I do lots of posts of me just out and about at different events in classrooms. Um, And also too, I would recommend having a link in your Instagram bio for people that want to find out more about you. And that could be, I love using Linktree. Linktree is a free uh, platform that essentially is one link that will connect you to your Instagram, that will connect you to your LinkedIn, your website, your um, any sort of platform you might have. So you might want to have a Linktree in your Instagram bio or some other sort of link and engage with your audience. If people are liking, if people are commenting, make sure to like their comments, make sure to have chats with them. Um, don't be afraid to, re- refla- sorry, afraid to reply to their tags, their comments, their direct messages, everything like that. Instagram is very fun. It's very relaxed. You might want to consider starting a professional TikTok account. Now, TikTok, I know we are all on it. I am personally addicted to it. I think I spent maybe an hour and a half on TikTok last night, just having a bit of a scroll before bed. Um, And TikTok is a really great platform to go viral on. And the algorithm really preferences organic content. Now, TikTok is predominantly based, uh, designed for young users with 62% of TikTok users aged between 10 and 29 years of age. So really think about who you're wanting to engage with. If you're wanting to engage with people in their 50s and 60s, Um, for your project, TikTok might not be the platform for you, but it is a really great way to get that traction. So when it comes to creating a professional TikTok account, um, make sure to showcase your strengths, your hidden talents and your abilities and show them the behind the scenes. Um, Now, TikTok, again, they don't necessarily want really high quality, high production value sort of TikTok videos. They really like just like authentic behind the scenes shot on a smartphone or on an iPad sort of videos. Make sure you're engaging with your audience. So replying to comments, because that will, again, get your post out there even further with the algorithm. Um, But make sure that you're keeping your post to a certain 
human quality. You don't just want to like take a random video and just hit post, spend a bit of time editing it, like put some really nice transitions in, put a bit of music over it, everything like that. You can with TikTok and how TikTok is different to a lot of other platforms is TikTok doesn't mind if you post multiple videos in a day. TikTok, you quite often have to take what we call a spray and pray approach where you just sort of spray everywhere and hope something lands. Um, so with TikTok, you might want to be posting, say, two or three different videos a day, trying different strategies and just seeing what works and what doesn't because you never know what's going to go viral. And finally, always use trending hashtags, trending sounds, and just like trends that are going around. Um, so with TikTok, I would recommend, um, and this is a Scott Miller endorsement, if you are going to create a professional TikTok account, make sure you're spending a bit of time each day or each week on TikTok actually consuming content. Because the better you understand the content that's going viral on TikTok, the more likely your content is to go viral because you'll be recreating it, jumping on those trends, jumping on those sounds and those hashtags. So something for you guys to consider after this uh, webinar as well is how you might plan out your digital presence. So we've talked about a lot of different ways you could create a digital presence. You could create a professional LinkedIn account, a professional portfolio website. You could have an Instagram account, a TikTok account, a YouTube account, any different type of social media account. But firstly, I'd recommend pick one and do one and do one really well. I know for myself, when I first started trying to build my personal brand, I tried to do everything. I tried to have every sort of different social media account um, as my professional account, and I just didn't really do anything very well. So what I did was I was like, look, I really enjoy spending time on Instagram and LinkedIn. They're going to be the two I own. So with that, think about who is your target audience? Who are you trying to target and what sort of platforms are they on? Think about, do you have a professional headshot? Now, when it comes to having a headshot that you can upload uh, to your LinkedIn or your Instagram, I always recommend just get one of your friends, your family, your teachers to take just like a photo of you on your iPad, on your um, phone, something like that, and have just a neutral background. I don't want to see any filters. I don't want to see like any crazy things in the background going on, unless that is your personal brand is chaos. Um, but make sure you've just got a really nice neutral background. And think about what sort of topics you might post about. Are you going to be sharing your personal experiences, the events that you're attending or showcasing different achievements? So make sure you've got content ready to go with those digital platforms as well. And the final thing is, so you've built your personal brand. You've got that elevator pitch ready to go. You've created your digital presence. Now it's time to actually get out there and start growing your network. So how do we do that? How do we start networking? Now, networking is a really scary thing. I know I really struggled with it. As a young person in school and as a young entrepreneur, I was always told like, network, network, network. You've got to build your network. You've got to grow your network. And I was like, how? Like, is it, is it like a, like farming? Do I plant some network seeds and just water them? Like, what do I go to a store and buy a network? Like, how does that happen? Um, but growing your network, there's a number of things you can do to get started. And again, as a young person, you might be sitting there saying, well, like, why would anyone want to network with me? Why should I go to events? Is anyone actually going to want to talk to me? But as ev with everything else we've talked about, sometimes you've just got to start and put yourself out there. Now, when it comes to growing your network, the first thing I'd always recommend is talking to your friends and family. Now, whilst you might not want to work with your friends or work with your family, um, they, you might want to tap into their network, friends, family, or teachers, because they might know people that can help you out. They always say it's not necessarily what you know, it's all about who you know. And I can confirm that is very true. And especially here in Australia, they always say it's six degrees of separation. It's six people between you and the person you want to meet. In Australia, it's more like two. Everyone knows everyone. So chances are, if you want to work in a specific industry, if you want to meet a certain type of person, chat to your friends, chat to your family, chat to your teachers and see who you can start networking with. Um, and if these people have LinkedIn profiles, start connecting with them. The next one is attending local events. Now, for you guys as young people, your teachers probably get a whole bunch of emails every week with different events that are going on in your local community. And those could be local chamber of commerce events, networking events, meetups, things like that. Um, but I highly recommend as a young person going to those events. They might be in the morning, before school, in the evening after school, on weekends, but just getting out there to start networking with different people and seeing who you meet. Now, when you do go to these different networking events, I know it can be really tempting to just sort of like stand in the corner, like get a glass of water, like get a little croissant to stand there and not talk to anyone because talking to people is really scary. But I encourage you to think about how you can push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Say, well, look, I'm just going to go out there and just chat to someone because I can guarantee you the other people at that event are just as scared as you are. Um, I know for myself, I've been going to these sorts of events for nine years and I still walk into rooms where I don't know anyone and I get my glass of water and my croissant. I'm standing in the corner being like, don't make me talk to people. But then someone will come up and I'll be like, oh my God, thank you for coming and saying hi. I was terrified. I didn't know anyone. 
So I always recommend going to those events um, and start introducing yourself to people. And a really nice touch when going to these events could be creating some personal business cards as well. I'd highly recommend when it comes to business cards, checking out a platform like Vistaprint. Um, Vistaprint, uh, they will create all sorts of different things for you. You can get like custom shirts made, tote bags, everything like that. They also make business cards and you can get about 250 business cards for I think as little as like 10 to $15. And what you could do is jump on Canva, use one of their templates, do up a little business card design, and then start handing that out when you're starting to meet people. Or if you create a LinkedIn profile, connecting with them on LinkedIn at those events. I also recommend getting social, um, making sure if you are creating a professional social media platform, uh, social media account, um, getting out there and joining Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups and just participating in conversation. And also to start joining some local organizations and start getting that experience and building those networks. Now, that could be joining your local United Nations, like your UN Youth, your local Lions Club or Rotary Club with their Leos and Rotaract programs, joining a youth council if your city council has a youth council that runs, a junior chamber of commerce through your regular chamber of commerce, a youth parliament program or a volunteering program to just get out there and start building that experience and that expertise. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to build your network by sitting in like sitting just in your like bubble and just talking to the people in your bubble you've got to get out there push yourself outside of your comfort zone to build those networks now that's a wrap i am watching the time and i'm really conscious that we're approaching for those on the east coast 6 15 it's time for dinner for those on the west coast it's 4 15 it's time to go home if you guys are still at school or time to get started on those assignments because i know we're in the middle of exam and assessment period at the moment but thank you guys for tuning in as a bit of a recap what we've done this afternoon is we've had a look at how we can build our personal brand so we can start networking accessing opportunities and getting a head start on our chosen career pathways we started by identifying our passions superpowers and our values and we looked at how we can wrap those three things together to create a personal elevator pitch we've brainstormed ways to create our digital presence on different platforms and we finished up by having a look at ways we can start to grow our network so it's been a pretty action-packed hour and we've definitely done a lot but the good news is is this is being recorded this live stream so you can go back and watch it again um, if you want to dive deeper into any of the content or just get a refresher and remind yourself what we've covered now, again, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to our sponsors um, of the Next Gen Awards for helping make this masterclass possible. This masterclass is run as part of the 2023 Next Gen Awards program, um, and that's been made possible thanks to Federation University, the Bond University Transformer Program, Bop Industries, and the Fogarty Foundation. And as a reminder, you can support the Next Gen Awards by supporting them. I highly recommend jumping onto their website, seeing what they do, because they all do some really exciting things, and you'll be hearing more from them um, throughout the rest of the year as part of the Next Gen Awards program. Now, if you guys enjoyed this, we do have two more masterclasses coming up. We have a community leaders masterclass that's going to be led by the fabulous Sophie from the BOP team on the 18th of July. So that's early term three for you guys. And we have a pitching masterclass that's going to be led by the fabulous Maddie from BOP that's happening on the 1st of August. Now, both of these masterclasses are happening at the same time. I'm kicking off at 3.15 on the West, on the West Coast, or 5.15 on the East Coast, and they'll run for about an hour in uh, on YouTube Live. So make sure to head to these links and register your free ticket for those as well. Really great ways to help you build your skills and get your ideas up and off the ground. And as a reminder as well, um, make sure to check out the Next Gen Awards if you haven't already and submit your nomination. Uh, nominations are now open and they do close on the 21st of August. And we have award categories for the Young Innovator of the Year, the Young Entrepreneur of the Year, the Young Leader of the Year, the Gen Z of the Year, the Gen Alpha of the Year, and the Innovative Educator of the Year as well. Um, so make sure head to popindustries.com slash next dash gen. Um, I believe the link is in the comments. Um, and make sure to submit your nomination as well. But that brings us to the end of our masterclass. Thank you guys so much. I hope you've had as much fun as I have working with you all this afternoon. I can't wait to see your LinkedIn requests coming through. If you don't already have me on LinkedIn, just type in Scott Miller. I will absolutely connect with you. Um, and I really can't wait to see those personal brands continue to come to life. Have a fabulous afternoon. I hope all of your exams and assessments go well for those that are still in exam period. And I will see you all next time. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. We'll